And I am talking once again with the amazing Chuck Kayser, who is based in Kyoto, Shiga area, where he does a lot of organic farming and encouraging people to get out and volunteer and learn about growing their own food, as well as encouraging other farmers uh, with a talk show series and a podcast since the last time we talked to Chuck. Talk about you didn't start off thinking you wanted to be an organic farmer, but now you really feel like being an organic farmer is something you think about every morning when you wake up and every night before you go to bed. And it's just an embedded part of your DNA right now. Really, really true. And it's taken me over unexpectedly. Um, again, like you said, with that, there was no plan for it, but. Peace. Let's talk about some of the vegetables you've had success growing organically. Well, the cucumbers and carrots are always a standard and whatever's extra I put into jars with some pickling solution. Um, and I sell that way. It's called an added value product. Um, but I also really, what I really like growing is things in the cucurbit family, um, especially squashes and zucchinis. Um, they're just one of my favorite foods to eat and to grow. It's a very robust plant, um, but I also grow lots and lots of beans this year. I think I grew 10 or 15 varieties of beans this year. Um, oh, wow. And I grew, for the first time, I grew out soybeans properly. I've, I've grown edamame several years, but the monkeys always yeah. take them. They love them. Here and I got some great edamame, and then I grew them out uh, to full size, and I got the big black dried soybeans as well, which is exciting. Uh, when you, when that you is think exciting. This is, a real, this is a real sustainable thing because once they're full size and dried, you can keep them for years, and at any time then eat them or plant them and grow some more, so. Here is this pesto, and it looks like hummus. Is this from your I think that is a hummus. Yep, that's pesto that I don't make from basil usually. I usually make it from things like kale and broccoli leaves and carrot leaves and things like that. So it's kind of reusing something that may not have otherwise been eaten. And it's healthier than basil. And it's all vegan. Um, I just use like six or seven ingredients. I use garlic, olive oil, salt, whatever leaves I'm using. And then I use uh, walnuts and I use uh, tahini, basically, which is neri goma in Japanese. Um, and probably something else, maybe a little bit of paprika or something like that. Because that's a great way to have a longer shelf life. And we know that if you can give people something healthy and convenient in terms of long shelf life, that's a great way to get people attracted to vegan products and locally grown products. There just isn't enough in Japan. We need more ideas like this. This is great. You have enough people in your local area that you can have enough demand for what you can provide. That's awesome. Nobody knows about climate change more than farmers because we're working in the climate. I mean, you, you see it when it, I like, I like asking people, hey, when was the last drought? Nobody knows, nobody knows but farmers because when there's no rain, we gotta be out there watering and putting you know mulch down and things like that. And we had a really, really dry fall. We went almost the whole month of October with very, very little rain. And it was, it was really tough because like I said, these plants need water and these plants are used to a certain moisture in the atmosphere, not just in the soil. And it just gets really, really hard, harder to take care of them. And there's some crops we just can't do. Um, and of course, there's gonna be those people who are pointing to the two or three crops that actually did better, you know, because of this, like peppers did really, really well and tomatoes did really, really well because they like water, but they put down deep roots and, and when there's less water, they're sweeter and things like that. But that's that's shining a light on a, on, a, on you know, a bright spot of a very big problem. Climate change is huge for us. And one of the things also people don't realize is, well, I used to get over a meter of snow um, in, in, in Kutsuki. And that was when I first started going up there about 15, 20 years ago. And every year it's gotten a little bit less, a little bit less. And last year it was like a foot of snow, like 30 centimeters for a month or two. And that was it. Problems with that is the insects wake up earlier and these insects might have a one to three month life cycle. 
um, that are eating my plants and suddenly they're started earlier. So by the time summer comes along, they're exponentially greater in numbers because more, more cycles have gone through by the time it's really hot in summer and suddenly I'm overwhelmed. And for somebody who doesn't spray chemicals, of course, more insects is a huge problem. And so there's a lot of little things going on here with climate change that other people just may not realize. But for farmers, we know what's happening. We know.